you have a Bible, you can go willing and physically able, turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. All right. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and 1 Corinthians. All right. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If you don't have your Bible, that's okay. Use your iPhone, your iPad, whatever you're working with, because the word of the Lord is the word and does not change. Amen? Amen. Yes. Whatever you are working with. First Corinthians chapter 9, starting with verse 19. All right. First Corinthians chapter 9, starting with verse 19. And I'm going to just read a few verses. And here, my friends, is how the New International Version records God's word. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, but I'm under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. All right. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. Mm -hmm. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means, I might save some. I do this all for the sake of the gospel that I may share in his blessings. All right. May we see my friends in the awesome presence of our Lord and Savior, so we call him Jesus. Uh huh. Years ago, years ago, NBC had a television show. It was a reality kind of game type game show. It was called Fear Factor. All right. This show was no longer on air, but you may see it in syndication. Uh, uh, again, it was like a reality show, more like a game show. And, and the intent of this show, Fear Factor, was to have the participants compete in outrageous stunts to win $50,000. Mm -hmm. well, and, and, and these stunts would invoke fear in the participants, but 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 the, the, the few times I happened to catch this show because I never regularly watched it, but for the few times I happened to catch this show, what I thought was the most challenging was, was not the stunts the people were actually act, act, being asked to engage in. What, what I thought was most amazing was the 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 the, 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 the contestants would be challenged to eat or drink various things that, that, that was we were rather disgusting. Uh, right. They will be asked to, uh, to eat live bugs and, uh, and eat maggots and to uh, 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 drink blended rat smoothies. Yes, right. yes, but blend them in the blender and drink all of that. Uh, eat live spiders, roadkill. Some instances they had to drink animal urine and, and eating disgusting animal parts. Some of you have seen this show, so you know what I'm talking about. But what amazed me, my friend, is that, is that these individuals were still willing to do all this just for a chance to win $50,000. Wow. No guarantee they were going to get it, just for the chance. But the reality of it is, my friend, reality is that Human beings have demonstrated their capacity to go to extremes for frivolous and meaningless gains all of their lives. Right, right. They've always tried to get a little more, go, go a little extra, just to gain something that seemed uh, uh, that was small but seemed uh -huh. big to them. Uh huh. What do I mean? Well, I know. How many, how many times have we seen or read about individuals who are willing to stand in line in freezing temperatures on what we refer to as Black Friday just to get a discounted television or, or discounted smartphone or, or vacuum cleaner? How many times have we seen lines wrapped around the building and, and individuals are fighting and climbing over each other just 
they get a discount at the price yeah, of the right, object. Right. We saw individuals fighting, and, and, and when they see that that's the last television in the store, they're fighting over this. Huh? As human beings, we have the capacity, we have shown that we will lie, cheat, steal, kill, yeah. and destroy our own bodies, mm -hmm. all for fleeting moments of pleasure, wow. or for something that will not last. Right. Preacher, why do you say that? Well, we will go see a doctor. Pay good money and have surgery that's not even needed. Wow. We will do a nip, a tuck, a plump, a lift. A, we will put our life at risk. Have surgery just to have a face lift, eyelid, eyelid lift, tummy tuck, Botox, inj Botox injection, hair replacement, breast implants, nose alter, chin, cheek, or jaw, jaw bone change, fat injections, and even have our butt lifted up. We don't need it. I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about those who, who have a medical emergency or a medical need. I'm talking about those who don't even have a need, but yet we will do this. And just so we're clear, I'm not angry or hating on anyone who wants to spend their money to do something like that because, well, they work for it. But, but my question is, if you are willing to do all of that, to gain this small thing, even though you will, it won't even last, if you are willing to do all of that, yes. as we prepare to go into this lesson this morning, St. Paul, my question to you then is, what are you willing to do for the sake of the gospel? All right. What are you willing Amen. to do for the sake of the gospel? If you're willing to do all that other nonsense, uh -huh. what are you willing to do for the sake of the gospel. In today's reading, we see the Apostle Paul, and he's writing to the church in Corinth. The church in Corinth, we know, was one of the churches that Paul planted, but it was one of his problem children. This church was located in Greece, and, and Greece had lots of temples and, and idol worshiping and false gods, and they had temple prostitutes. Greece was a mess. And, and, and this behavior and this culture was, was influencing the church. All right. And now individuals were bringing these thoughts and ideas and, and behaviors inside of the church because the truth be told, St. Paul, if you and I are not careful, that can easily happen in our church. Yet, brother, we will allow our social media friends, we will allow popular culture, we will allow athletes and athletes and entertainers to bring their ideas and their thoughts and the way they think things should go into the church, and if we're not careful, we will find ourselves listening to them and ignoring God's word. And when Instead of the church influencing the culture, we will then begin to see the culture influencing the church. This is what was happening in the church in Corinth. And it began to get very messy in that church. Yet in spite of all this nonsense that was taking place in Corinth, in that church, the apostle Paul was not giving up on them. Amen. Paul was going to continue to write and encourage the church. He was going to continue to pray for this church. And as his schedule would allow, he was going to continue to make visits out to the church in Corinth because to Paul knew that too much was at stake. Paul knew that he had a calling that Christ had placed on his heart. Paul was not going to give up on that church and those believers and those saints are not saving that city simply because it was too hard. And my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that this is why you and I are to continue to come out and worship every single week. This is why you are to continue to support your church and church members every single week. This is why you are to continue to pray for your church because too much is at stake. Jesus paid a heavy price for the church. He established the church and you cannot stay at home. Give up or stay at home just because somebody made you mad. You can't stay home just because you're having a bad day or a bad week. You cannot stay home just because when you Church. 
And so as we begin to make our way into this morning's text, the first thing I want to know, St. Paul, is well, are you committed sure to those in the church? Well, the church are in the church. In the church. Yeah, yeah, we see that verse 20. Mm -hmm. You need to ask yourself, well, what are you willing to do for the sake of the gospel for those who are inside of the church? Yes. All right, all right, all right. Paul says, mm -hmm. we know in verse 19, Paul said, okay, here's the deal. Paul says, I'm a free man. All right. Paul makes it very clear. He said, Let, let's be clear on this. Wow. Paul says, I'm a free man. And, and right. let me explain to you why he says it in Paul. Paul had dual citizenship. Uh -huh. He was born a Jew, wow. but he was also born with Roman citizenship. Right. Right. And Roman citizenship at that time uh -huh. was highly coveted. My Lord. It was coveted so much that some individuals were willing to pay a high price well. to get Roman citizenship. Yeah. Because when they became a Roman citizen, this is what happened. They were entitled to certain rights that non-citizens yeah. did not have. Right. They were protected by Roman law. Well. And as a Roman citizen, they had the right to vote, hold yeah. office, they could make contracts, own no, property. No, no, no. People right. were proud to hold their head up high, yeah. throw their shoulders back, yeah. pump off their chest, and say, I'm a Roman yeah. citizen. Right. Right. And Paul had both. Jewish citizenship and Roman citizenship. Right. And Paul knew that because of this, beyond a shadow of a doubt, he was a free man. Amen. But knowing all of this, well, Paul said uh -huh. he became a slave yes. for Jesus. All right. All right. Paul said, I'm free, and I know I'm free, well, but I'm a slave for yes. Jesus. Amen. Because there were souls that needed to be saved. The gospel needed to get out into the culture. Households needed to be restored. Marriages needed to be repaired. Children needed to be delivered. Drug users needed to get off drugs. Alcoholics needed to be restored. Paul says there's too much at stake. He said, I'm a slave for Jesus because souls needed to be saved. Paul said, I became a slave for that. Uh -huh. And his attention was directed to the Jewish right. brothers, his Jewish brothers and sisters. Right. right. And so we see in verse 20 that Paul says, To the Jews, I became like I became just like a Jew right. to win the Jews. To those under the law, uh -huh. referring to the Mosaic law, I became like them mm -hmm. to win them. Uh -huh. right. Now I'll be honest. When you read this, it doesn't make much sense. Mm -hmm. Because if Paul was already a Jew, right. which he was, right. and followed the Mosaic law, uh -huh. which he did, mm -hmm. what does Paul mean when he says, I became like a Jew, All and right. I became like those under the law? All Paul, right. if you were already there. All right. Well, my friends, to understand this, we have to first examine Paul's life before his Damascus Road experience. Paul lived a very strict Jewish life. He was a Pharisee, we know, from the tribe of Benjamin. He strongly believed in following the law given to Moses, given to the Jews by Moses. And if anyone tried to go against that law, Paul would violently oppose them. We saw this with the stoning of Stephen. Now he stood there and had all, had all the coats where everyone just pelted Stephen to the death with stones. We saw how Paul asked for permission from the church for letters to go out and if anybody was preaching anything but the law of Moses to throw them into jail. Right, right. This was Paul. And in his eyes, his entire life and salvation was all wrapped up in the law of Moses. Right. But once Paul entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ, he did not abandon the law of Moses. No, my friends, that's not what he did. Mm -hmm. Paul was still very much a Jew. Well. It's just that now he recognized that his salvation was no longer tied to following all the rules of the law. All right. His 
Felicia was now directly tied to his faith and Way trust up. and belief in Jesus Christ and Calvary's cross. And so, what Paul was saying in verse 20 was, I'm willing to be like a Jew right. and follow all their customs, not because I need to, but by doing that, I may be able to lead my Jewish brothers and sisters to accept Jesus Christ by my behavior. Right. All right. All right. Come here. Come here. Let me come help you out. I know some of you say, okay, Pastor, you have made it clear. If you were to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, then, verse 24, there you see Paul. And he's explaining all the hardships uh -huh. he has endured for the sake of the gospel of yeah, Jesus Christ. Right. Because we know the truth be told, sometimes when we carry this cross, it can get heavy sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes when yeah. we carry this cross, we lose friends, relationships yeah. in. Yeah. Our children don't yeah. want to visit us. Yeah. Our children don't want to talk. Sometimes even our parents, our brothers and sisters, yeah. they don't want to hang out with us. And let's not talk about once you get to the job and so forth. Uh -huh. Now you become the Jesus. Now you become the Holy Roller. Oh! Jewish law said, this is how we deal with these things. 
the Lord. And let me encourage you to keep moving on. And when you and I work together, St. Paul, we become better together. We grow together. The church grows together. And then the spare can kill our home. And now our household begins to grow. Our children begin to grow. Our spouse and brothers and sisters, our Right. Well, 
But what Paul is saying is that he is identifying with those who are without the law. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. During that time, many of the Jewish people were still holding tightly to the Mosaic law. Right. right? Yeah. So this is all they knew. This law was part of their culture. The Mosaic law was part of their identity for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. The law was given by God through Moses. This law said who they were, and it distinguished them from others in the community, in the culture. This law was in part of their DNA for all intents and purposes. Wow. But the problem was that when Jesus showed up fulfilling God, fulfilling God's prophecy, of sending the Savior. Uh -huh. I'm talking about prophecy like Isaiah 53 when he says, Isaiah says, who has believed our report? Well, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Uh -huh. Surely he has borne our grief yes. and carried well, our well, sorrows. Well, well. Yet we yes. did as seen him stricken, yes. smitten of God and afflicted. This is what Isaiah was talking about Jesus. And then we know Isaiah said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. Uh -huh. He was bruised all iniquities, well, the chastising the peace was yeah, upon him and yeah, with his stripes, yeah. we are healed. Yeah. And so Isaiah was saying, who believes what I'm saying? Well, and the problem that happened when Jesus showed up, my friends, was that the Jews was looking for a Savior because the prophet said a Savior was coming, but they did not believe that Jesus was the Savior. Well, they did not believe that Jesus was that person. They did not believe Isaiah's report. And so they held tightly to their law like a security blanket. Uh -huh. right, right. And so Paul is saying in order to reach those who did not have the law, uh -huh. which was the unchurched, the Gentiles, yeah. Paul says, I became like them. Well. Right. In other words, seeing how the Gentiles or the unchurched did not have the law to hold as their spiritual security blanket, which was not going to work for salvation anyway. All right. Uh -huh. Seeing how the Gentiles did not have any family tradition linked to God's Mosaic law. Seeing how the Gentiles had no family heritage, no holy festivals to celebrate God because of this law. The only hope they had for salvation was faith in Jesus Christ and the law. Amen. And so Paul was saying, I'm going to be just like them and use that to reach them. In other words, Paul was saying, my friends, I'm not going to try to get them to follow the law of Moses. I'm not going to tell their moms and daddies they should circumcise their babies on the eighth day. I'm not going to talk to them about celebrating Jewish holiness All because right. those things do not matter to them. All but right. Paul said, I'm just going to hang out with them and not talk about law or traditions. I'm just going to be a friend to them like Jesus was a friend. I'm just going to love on them because Jesus loved on them. Paul said, I'm going to engage in conversation with them every single day. I'm going to pray with them. And if I do all of that, I just might win them to Christ. Yeah. At the same time, I want to tell you, if we want to seek and save those who are lost, uh -huh. if we want to be a light to this world, yeah. we need to come down from where we are sitting and we need to move outside the sanctuary and meet folks right where they are. And when we meet them right where they are, they will not be in the same place that you and I are.
just like them. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They don't need the law. Uh huh. This is why Paul got so upset with Peter. Second Corinthians, uh, Galatians Lord. chapter two. He said, "Look here, Peter. I see you hanging out with the Gentiles yeah. and eating with them when your Jewish buddies aren't around." Well, but then when your Jewish buddies come around, you back away from the Gentiles and now you start saying how they need to follow the law. He said, yeah. that ain't right, Peter. You don't need to do that. He said, we got to be wise to we enforce Shut something up. on them Shut that up. we ourselves don't even follow. Well, we don't need to try to push all of our church stuff uh -huh. on those outside of church. Stuff. We just talk about Jesus. We just be a walking and living gospel to them. And allow the Holy Spirit to change it. Right, yes. right. All right, let me get going more. Let me be done. We know what we're willing to do for the sake of the gospel for those inside the church. Uh huh. We know what we're willing to do for the sake of the gospel for those who are outside the church. Uh huh. The last is Saint Paul. What are we willing to do for the sake of the gospel for those who are confused about the church? Well, uh -huh. That church is confused. Confused. Is it verse twenty-two? Now, this part of the text is very, was very challenging, even as you read this. Mm -hmm. And it's challenging for a couple reasons, at least from my perspective. Because mm -hmm. we see in verse 22 that Paul says, to those who are weak, I became weak to win the weak. All right. And what's challenging is, it's not clear, Paul, who are the weak. All right. That's the first challenge. Uh -huh. But the second thing that makes this passage challenge is that, catch this, now catch this. Paul changes his language. Mm. What do you mean, preacher? Well, when Paul was referring to those Jews and those under the law, with that, but Paul says, I became like them or as them. Right. Uh -huh. When it came to those who did not have the law, those who were outside church, Paul says, I became like them or as them. Mm -hmm. But here, in verse 22, Paul says, I became weak. Well. All right. He didn't say, I became like weak. Uh -huh. I didn't become as weak. Paul right. says, no, I became weak. Mm -hmm. right. And all what Paul was saying, I became just exactly like them. All right. Uh -huh. but, but here's the challenge. Right. This language of being weak, it does not match up. Yeah. With all that Paul has been teaching throughout Scripture. Mm. All right. And I'm like, Paul, what do you mean you're weak when you tell us in Romans chapter 8 that we're more than conquerors? Right. Paul, what do you mean you're weak when you tell us I can do all things through Christ's right. strength right. into the right. church of right. right. What do you mean, Paul, that I'm weak when you tell Timothy God has not given us fear yeah. and fear of power and love and sound life? Paul, yeah. what do you mean you became yeah. weak yeah. when you talk about all this power that yeah. you have? Yeah. Uh, when you see all these folks who are around us, right, who are we, what do you right, mean right. you became like, you became them as well? Yeah. Right. Well, right. some scholars suggest that Paul was referring to those Christians uh -huh. who were struggling in their faith. All right, right. all right. And that's certainly plausible. Because we've all been there. That's right. Truth uh -huh. be told. We've all struggled with our faith. Yes, Every pastor has decided has, has struggled with should they hand in their resignation. I'm just being true, be true. That, 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 that every pastor has questioned their calling. We've all had right. bad all days right. from the pulpit all the way to the pavement. Right. We've all yeah. had yeah. bad yeah. days where we just didn't think yeah. we could make it. Some of us have been in the hospital, yeah. we the doctors yeah. held their head down and didn't know what to do. We had to stack a few. Sometimes yeah. we Who were struggling in their faith. My Lord. But I believe there was something deeper here. Go ahead. I think Paul is referring to those who are truly lost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, they don't see the purpose of the church. They, they don't understand the need. It's not for Jesus. They're not willfully rejecting. They just don't understand it. Right. They right. have their mind made up that they don't need a relationship with Jesus Christ. Mercy. They are confused. And I think Paul may have been reflecting back on his own life before Christ. Right. When he too was lost and confused. 
when he was persecuting the church. And contrary to what others may have been thinking about Paul at that time, Paul was very weak, even though he appeared on the outside to be strong. Why do I say that, my friends? Well, if you were to look at Paul's letter to the church in Rome, we see in chapter 5, verse 6, that Paul tells the church, for while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the God. Yeah, yeah. And St. Paul, that's the gospel message. Yeah. Jesus didn't die for those who were strong. Right. Jesus didn't die for those who were capable. Yeah. Jesus died for those who were weak. Yeah. And you and I may know some folks who think they have it all figured out. Yeah. We may know some people who have nice bank accounts yeah. and they may be following other gods. Yeah. Or they may think that they just don't need Jesus at all. Yeah. And while they may appear to be strong, yeah. they may appear to have it going on. Right. But if they don't have a relationship with yes. Jesus, yes. they are indeed weak. Yeah. And our job, St. Paul, is not to try to tear them down. Right. Our job, St. Paul, is not to try to make them feel bad. Yeah. Our job is to try and win them to Christ. Yeah. Because we are all things to all men. Yeah. So that by all means, yeah. we can save some. Right. Can I tell you, my friends, it's really not that hard. All you have to do yeah. is think about how weak you were yeah. and how Jesus in himself took on your weakness in the form of humanity yeah. so that you could become strong. Yeah. All you need to do is think about where you were yeah. before you started walking with Jesus. Yeah. All you got to do is look at Calvary's cross. Because when we look at Calvary's cross, Save the 